Bakr is telling a story about how hitmen have been sent after him to, to kill, kill him, him yeah. because he's been giving so much down, people are accepting some, and the hitman comes and says, smash the door because there's a lizard there, the lizard half stuck in the door. <laughs> right? We've got these little scooters, yeah? Whoa, 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 And I'm like, oh, the story gets crazier, yeah? So Isa, you know, all over the world, we're getting these pictures, videos, stories from the Philippines, a place where the largest alligator was found. Then we get these people speaking in different languages that you find in the Philippines, our own team there, and so much baraka, so many shahada, mm -hmm. so much the salah camps and all these things going on. The question, of course, that many people are going to have in their mind, like, how did it begin? How did we just decide one day, wet finger in the air, let's go Philippines? How did it work? <laughs> so the origin story, yeah? Mm. Uh, you'd be surprised to find out how this started, subhanAllah. It's all from Allah. Allah does all these things. When you look back on it, you're like, wow, you can connect the dots. We were in Malaysia with Hamza. Hamza had a course there for another organization. He said, why don't you guys come and do the, a Dawah mission as well? We said, brilliant. Me and Salahuddin, we went. We go there, we meet someone called Fadli, right? And we're doing the Dawah mission. Malaysia is going great. We're doing Dawah, feeding the homeless. It's brilliant. Everyone thinks Malaysia is a Muslim country. It is, mashallah. But it's got 40 to 45% of the country is non-Muslim, right? Yeah. Because of a, a lot of different nationalities there. And I um, know oh they're Malaysians, but they have different religions. And uh, so we were there, we're doing Dawah. And then I'm thinking, you know, we're in Far East Asia, right? Why? Because at IRA, we have got funds and we have to be careful about it. Why would we fly back and then fly back again to all these other countries? Because we're so close to them. And flights are much cheaper in that part of the yeah. world compared to the West, right? They're like 50, 100 pounds. I'm like, guys, let's do some more countries. Let's do Thailand. Let's do the Philippines and all of this. And Fadi's like, yeah, yeah, I got contact here. I got contact here. I got. It's done, yeah? We're like, fine. We go there, right? We fly all the way to Philippines. It's like a three-hour flight. Not that bad. I mean, Turkey's like four hours from London. And we fly there and we get there. And you reach and then we come out and we meet the brothers, right? And the guy there, Fahad, he looks just like Fadli, yeah? He, they look very similar. So we joke with Fadli saying, this is your brother, yeah? And they pick us up and then the, the hotel is like 15 minutes away. We're like, fine. We're tired because we've been flying. And we get in the car, all of us, and we're ready to go. And then we're in the car for about two hours, yeah? Because of the traffic, the cars don't move in that country because it's so overpopulated. I'm having flashbacks of Bangladesh, yeah? <laughs> overpopulated traffic, hot. it's just bustling hot. And I'm like, oh my God, after like about two hours, we get to the hotel, we go to our uh, in our room and we go to the hotel, rest and everything. And the next day we got Dao training. This Dao training has been arranged in about three days, okay? And you've done Dao trainings, you know how it is. So the next day we all get up again, stuck in traffic. So if anything is 20 minutes, you need to be ready two and a half hours before, okay? So I'm about to go and we're about to go and then I get close to the venue and then I forget that we left something at the hotel. Oh, there was a mistake. So the, it takes an hour and a half to like go back to the same 15 minute distance and then go back and bro, it's crazy. But anyways, finally, Saladin's already training. We reach because we're not training. We, me and Melo are doing like the filming and stuff. And we reach there, bro. And I look inside and I'm like, what is going on here? Brothers and sisters, we have over 150 people here from all over the Philippines who have come to this Dao training. Just this table here, we have like a two days drive away from here. So they caught a flight and we brought them in. In England, we're lucky if we get 30 people. It's packed. We, we do the Dao training. It's great. We go out to do some Dao in the park. So the most important thing to remember, purify your intention purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing, mashallah. You know, the people taking shahada as well, and it's brilliant. And then we leave, and we're like, you know what, that was great, mashallah, but that was a difficult mission. It's so much traffic, it's hot, and even the food, like, it's not palatable for us. We're not used to that kind of food, yeah? It has a strange smell. We're not used to it, yeah? We leave Philippines, yeah? And we're like, yeah, it was a great country, but we really don't want to go back again. Inshallah, we will, but it's not like, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's a tough country. So we're like, fine. We come back to England, everything's fine. None of this crazy, these yeah. shahadas and yeah. stuff happens. We're in Philippines, Fadli has come because he's doing something else, like a tour or something, but he's in the IRA office. And he's like, Hamza, Hamza, I've planned an island trip in Philippines. We're going to different islands to give dawah. Um, because Philippines is made of islands. So everyone thinks, oh, holidays and stuff. No, it's made in islands because it's, uh, there's yeah, so yeah. much ocean. You have to travel. You can't like drive to Birmingham from London. You have to like, cross the ocean and go on boats and ferries and stuff so he's like i'm gonna do some different islands with the brothers and i'm like oh man 
uh, <laughs> I really, but I'm like, you know what, Hamza, why don't we do this for our next fundraising campaign, right? Show people the work. Uh, and uh, Hamza's like, yeah, sure, why not? And I'm like, okay, Fadli, let's do it, inshallah, right? And then we go again. But this time, last time we went to Manila, it's called Metro Manila. That's the popular city. This time we go to Cebu and other places, right? And that traffic isn't there. And then we're like, fine. And then we start going around and stuff. And then we meet somebody called Abu Bakr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you saying, oh yeah? You know what I mean? No, he's, he's a legend. <laughs> Bro, we meet this brother called Abu Bakr, right? We travel to his place. It, uh, he picks us up in Cebu, yeah? So Cebu is the main city. And we go to the hotel and everything and we relax. And then we get ready. We start planning, inshallah. We have our meetings and stuff. And then we go to where Abu Bakr stays. You have to go three hours. And then you have to stay in a hotel there close by. Near, near his uh, his community and then and these are the worst of the worst hotels everything smells it's very difficult for you to identify the smell but in here it really stinks it's just the smell from here it stains everywhere bro almost these are like broken down finished hotels like i've had the hotel with like i had to smash the door because there's a lizard there the lizard half stuck in the door <laughs> there's no water there's no toilet paper Bro, when we go to the hotel, they're not expecting us. Even though we booked it online, they're not even checking their booking.com, yeah, because no one goes to the hotel. When I when we're trying finding the we're trying to find the owners, we're like, where are they? Where are they? We go, I'm hearing this music coming from a room, and I'm like, what is that, man? It's all like a movie, yeah. We go in, bro. There's like, there's a DJ disco karaoke going on, and they're like dancing in there, <laughs> and we're like, excuse me, and they're like, oh, oh, and bro. And then they come out, they're like, oh, you guys are guests, yeah? They don't even expect any people <laughs> to stay at this hotel. We're like, yeah. And, and then they start cleaning our rooms, giving us like keys. We're like, subhanAllah. Anyways, we stay at the hotel and this is what this was a wake up call for me, yeah? For us, it's tough. The water isn't warm. There's no toilet roll, okay? There's a lizard half stuck and it's alive the whole night. I wake up at four, that lizard is still like moving, but it's half crushed on the door. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I'm like, fine. Inshallah, it'll be okay, yeah? We, we, we weathered the storm, me, Salah, we were all like, yes, we did it, Alhamdulillah, yeah? We go down, we're praying Fajr now on the grass, and there's the Filipino brothers here as well. And the Sheikh, you know, the Hafiz, he's one of the key guys on the team, he turns around and he says to the brothers, you know, yesterday was such a struggle, the three-hour drive, getting here and everything, but look, after hardship comes ease, look where we are, look at this hotel. And we're like, looking at each other thinking, we are, this is a nightmare for us, but look at their mindset, mashallah, yeah? So positive. And that's how they're thinking. But anyways, that happens. And then we go to Abu Bakr, right? And Abu Bakr basically has like a village. Yeah. And it's called Cebu Medina Community. And I'm like, what is Cebu Medina Community, yeah? Bro, he's got a village of new Muslims. Allah Akbar. He said there's only like two people here who are born Muslims. Rest are all new Muslims. Him, his wife, his kids. He's built a masjid there from his family back in Canada who was sending donations. Abu Bakr doesn't have a lot of money, yeah? They both they built a whole big masjid, yeah? It's still not painted and stuff, but they're making it work. And there's like kids there and they've got like rickshaws that they sponsor so they can ride the rickshaw. They can earn money and do dawah, sustainable projects. They've got livestock. I'm like, what is going? Is this like community rules? They all gather together in one place, uh, and people say if people stay in the masjid, like Ahl Sufa, you know Abu Huraira, he used to stay in the masjid of the Prophet mm. right? And these are some of the people who they, they didn't have too much money, and they would stay there, bro. They were following these principles in the middle of the Philippines, and I'm like, what is this guy? Abu Bakr also was an engineer. He used his skill to build a radio station, like from whatever he could find, broadcast it to the local villages, bro. Today, he's at 4,000 shahadas from no. that radio station, bro. And I'm like, I'm like, the world doesn't know about these people. They don't know that these exist. And this is one of the reasons we're doing this podcast and these, these videos so people learn, right? So we see Abu Bakr, but this is not, <laughs> the story gets crazier, yeah? Abu Bakr is telling us stories about how hitmen have been sent after him to, to kill, kill him, him yeah. because he's been giving so much down and people are accepting some and the hitman comes and says you're not as bad as they said you're helping people why should I kill you yeah and subhanAllah this is the kind of story yeah but they, Allah will protect these people yeah and then we go on a ferry and we go to this island yeah and there's a close by island he's like we need to give dawah here we get there and then basically we're like to get in there we because we just came in a in a ferry they're like okay we need to get to those villages so they give us scooters right so um they're only like five pounds for a scooter or something yeah so we all get on the scooters and it looks like a team of like you know, remember well, that. okay I we remember haven't that. got harley davidson's right but we've got these little scooters yeah oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
and one brother's falling and cutting up his thing, but we, we all make it, yeah? And then we get to this first village. Okay, and this is like the first time I'm, I'm also experiencing something like this. We get to this village and we start giving dawah and Abu Bakr is giving dawah and he's got his screen, he's got his team around him. We're giving dawah bro and there's like 200 something people there. We're like brilliant, we're gonna give them dawah. Melo, make sure you capture us spreading the message. We're gonna, our job is to convey the call. Alhamdulillah, job done. Nobody will force anyone if you believe the truth is between you and God. You know, what are we eating the, after this? We can't have Filipino food guys because uh, you know, we're not used to this fish that you guys have. And we're, <laughs> that's how we're thinking. We're like, we're gonna do dawah and then we're gonna wrap up the dinner problem. But then, Bro, we gave them dawah and then Abu Bakr's like, okay, who wants to accept Islam? And 200 people Allah accept Allah. Islam. And we're like, okay, mashallah, Ashadi, <laughs> we're saying it with them. Abu Bakr's like, Isa, come, please do it, yeah? And I'm like, mashallah, Ashadi, And they're all taking shahada, bro. Then they pull out the hijabs. Yeah, and they're giving our hijabs to the sisters, yeah? And they're all wearing the hijab and they're telling them what's we're showing them how to pray salah. And I'm like, what is going on? And they're like, this is normal for Philippines. And I'm like, okay, how is this normal? Turns out Philippines was a Muslim country. Like Malaysia and all these countries, they were Muslims. Then King Philip came and the Spanish came. Mm. Philippines is the only Christian country in the Far East. The only country in the Far East that's a Christian country. They came and they basically made them convert Forced on them. the sword, yeah? So when you tell them you're a Muslim, they all know they were Muslims, right? So they kind of have that in the back of their head. Then you show them the, the Trinity and how it doesn't make sense. Bro, that's like just the formula for the, the Shahada, yeah? Instantly you break it down for them. And then basically you tell them oh, okay. and they take Shahada, yeah? And then bro, some of it, like you see, look at Abu Bakr. He took Shahada, look what he's built now, yeah? So they're long lasting Shahadas as well, mashallah. And you have to do your follow up. And bro, that's how Philippines started. Allah, and today we have 10 full time fl staff there. Flagship, we hired Abu Bakr. Flagship, Abu Bakr is hired, bro. You know, we've done missions with him again and again. And I'll go into those stories if people want to hear them, inshallah. There's so much more, but this was the initial flagship mission. And then, so look, remember the first trip where it's like traffic, we don't know what's going on. It's so difficult because you think, what's the practicality of Dawah in this country? If we're sitting in traffic for four or five hours, it'd be difficult. But then we see this and we're like, whoa. So this all started from that Malaysia mission, mm. subhanAllah. But it was absolutely incredible. And now people see the videos. Now now in Philippines, we're going to so many different levels. And, and even, even the plans for next year that we were talking about. plans for next year, bro. It's going to be a complete different beast. And, and you know, it just shows you fundamentally that Allah knows His people. SubhanAllah. We've got big, big plans ahead for next year, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. It's going to be incredible. 10x, inshallah. Love this world.